David, uh, we're going to try this again. Um, we, we have this thing where we keep coming back to talk about movies that I dislike. And sometimes, very rarely, there'll be uh, movies that I dislike that you also dislike. But, you know, a lot of the times we're in kind of disagreement. I'm curious to find out where you land on Rebel Ridge, the latest film from one of my favorite filmmakers, Jeremy Saulnier, which uh, debuted recently on Netflix, um, starring Aaron Pierre in, I, I've heard described as sort of a, a modern day twist on Rambo, and I, I can see that, but it is very, very different in a lot of regards. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so David, what did you make of Rebel Ridge? Uh, how did it come across your, I guess, your transom? and um, uh, what do you think of Sonia? Well, um, I too uh, really appreciate his films, uh, but I I did not for whatever reason. I just haven't got around to catching up with his last Netflix movie, Hold the Dark. I don't know. Did you see that? Oh yeah. yeah. So, so I got to catch up with that. Um, you recommend that? I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So got to catch up with that. But he also did some True Detective episodes um between hold the dark and rebel ridge um and rebel ridge kind of caught me unaware you know i think the trailer dropped maybe end of july or august or something and boom and right away i was just like oh this looks very interesting and then another uh critic friend of ours mark um he uh called it kind of jack reachery hmm. and, and i could see that so it's kind of like a cross between the current Reacher series and First Blood. Yeah. Um, and uh, I thought, you know, um, you know, I thought it was good. I mean, I, I really, the more I think about it, the more um, I watched it with my wife and, and we both enjoyed it. I, thought, I think there's more, there's more to kind of chew on and mull over than your typical um, point A to B kind of actioner. Or I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, it is. There's definitely action in it, but it's it's more of just like suspense, um, kind of you know, uh, cringy southern corruption um, kind of thing. Um, and yeah, I was I was hooked from the great opening, and um, and I, it really kept me. Um, and I was impressed with the way it was cut, also by Jeremy Saulnier, um, and the way um the you know the, the use of locations and everything i thought it was really well done i don't think it really um i think i feel like it's a story uh it's a screenplay that kind of trusts the audience and you know to just kind of you know um figure things out and it there's not a whole lot that's uh, not not a whole lot to like spoon feed over to us but um yeah, I mean, I, I really liked it as far as something different. Um, and as far as, like, the latest Netflix stuff, I mean, this is much better than what, what you usually see um, coming out of Netflix as far as original movies, I guess. Yeah. Um, let's start with our, uh, our main character, our main actor, Aaron Pierre. This mm -hmm. is the first time I'd really noticed him, but I went and I looked him up on IMDb, but I've mm -hmm. seen stuff that he's in. He was in yeah. M. Night Shyamalan's Old. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, playing, what was his character's name? Uh, was that mid the rapper? Dude? Dan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the, the, the funny thing is he hasn't been on the scene for very long. No. Um, but I, I looking at his filmography, I noticed it's probably pure coincidence, but he has a penchant for pay, playing characters named Terry. Mm. Um, he played, he played uh, Terry in a movie called or TV series, prime suspect Tennyson. <laughs> he played uh, Terrence in the movie foe. And here he plays Terry Richmond. Okay. In Rebel Ridge. Um, so yeah, just a funny little factoid. Um, also uh, the, as I mentioned in, uh, in our Facebook message, as I was halfway or just starting the movie, actually, um, in the film, Terry is going to bail out his cousin um, from a from a small town. He's biking through a small town with thirty six thousand dollars in cash in a backpack because he's going to go bail out his cousin. And his cousin's name is Michael Simmons. My the same name as my late father. Hilarious. <laughs> so, 
yeah very very strange especially seeing like a, the hospital band later on oh, uh, yeah, by the way geez. we're going to talk full spoilers here um so strap in if you haven't watched it um you Your know thoughts. <sighs> this movie is a puzzlement to me david uh -huh. i i didn't know it existed i didn't know there was a new jeremy Saulnier movie until uh -huh. i think you had mentioned it in our you know facebook group i'm like holy shit wow i gotta i gotta check that out because uh -huh. he is as they used to say, appointment television, no matter what he's doing. <laughs> and this is the first movie of his that I've seen that I really didn't respond to. I respect it, but I don't like it. Um, it's kind of like when Quentin Tarantino directed that episode of ER back in the 90s. Oh, my God. It had, it had his hallmarks. You know, you got the nurses walking through the hallways in like dark sunglasses to like, you know, poppy music. Um, but it's not, it's, it's kind of sanitized for television. You're not getting the graphic violence or the, the richly written profanity or any of the hallmarks. It's yeah. just him behind the camera. <laughs> and I, even though Sonia wrote this movie, I got that feeling too, because the hallmarks of his movies are, uh, you know, we do have the, the kind of revenge angle. He likes dealing in vengeance and things like that, but the extreme violence, the, the kind of wily dangerous madcap characters uh the questionable protagonists a lot of that was missing and there's a meanness to those movies and a dirtiness that was just scrubbed clean here in service of a gimmick which is it's going to be every small town corruption revenge story you've ever seen minus the violence because the whole thing is, I, I saw someone describe it as like it's it's the, the A team meets Rambo, where they're going to try and deal with small town corruption, but they're not going to hurt anybody. And I'm like, that's kind of cool, but usually there's in these movies the the person gets pushed too far, mm -hmm. and I guess the version of pushing Terry too far in this movie is he just uses more jujitsu. I I respect that he wanted to disarm people and and all that, but at a certain point. I'm expecting something out of a director that I'm just not getting. And once I cottoned on to, okay, I know what this is going to be for the next hour. It was very easy for me to tune out. And the other problem I had with it was it's what I'm, I'm going to coin. This isn't exactly true because a factoid is actually a fact that's not true. Um, but colloquially it's, you know, people use it as, Oh, it's a little fact. It's, you know, it's a fun little bit of trivia. This is like factoid filmmaking in that most of the dialogue is, hey, did you know this about the justice system? Hey, did you know this about how to administer Narcan? Hey, did you know this about posting bail? I'm like, the, Sonia is so in love with all of the things that he Wikipedia'd in writing this script, they just like spills it all out. And I'm like, this is not characterization. It's barely dialogue. What are we even doing here? And I wondered that during the entire, you know, two hours and 10 minutes. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, uh, here we are again. Um, <laughs> I I understand where you're going, but you know, as you're describing that, I also think that that's what kind of pulled me in is that this was so much different from his other movies, where it's not like you know gratuitously violent. Um, and I, I, w I mean, yes, there's definitely shocking, violent moments in his other movies, but I wouldn't say they're like for gratuity. It's just like, yeah, for, <laughs> I mean, there's definitely some shock value, but I, I feel like it's. Oh, yeah, I, he's I, not he's not a splatter king or anything. No, he, but I when he like, goes for violence, he goes for it. Yeah, yeah, I feel like he he plays in the real world like this is what would happen if it really happened. And I think I felt like that while watching Pierre's Terry character. Because I feel like, yes, especially when, and we're talking spoilers, especially when his cousin dies, that would be the moment where the camera leans in on the on the, the glare of the protagonist. And it's like, <laughs> that town is going to be lit on fire. It's going to be trashed. But I feel like with this character, I feel like it's kind of grounded in reality where like he knows he can only go so far in exacting his revenge and he knows that um he could just get himself into legal trouble uh, and he knows the kind of like the limitations and the parameters of 
what he can do and also the law. Um, so I feel like whereas whereas somebody like Rambo would say like push too far with PTSD, this is a guy who is more Zen than Rambo. He, I, th- I feel like he has more of like a, a solid center. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, he talks very soft, very, he's very easy to, you know, he's, he's very easy to understand. He's, he's methodical. Um, he kind of lives off the grid. Um, you know, basically rides his bike around with his backpack and got everything he needs in his backpack. Uh, has a, a tent out in the forest uh, outside of town, and he's fine. You could imagine that, let's say this would be like, you know, episode four of his adventures, and the, the first three <laughs> the first three episodes were going from town to town across America, you know? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like once I, once the, the more it was revealed about him, the more I kind of got on board with like, okay, this isn't going to be, you know, uh, the typical, now this whole town's going to pay, you know, for what happened to my cousin, you know, uh, or this whole, you know, corrupt precinct is going to pay. And I, you know, I kind of like that. I mean, even when uh, we were done watching it, my wife's like, he didn't kill anybody. Um, and I'm like, yeah, you know, he's, you know, he's he was basically using like, uh, kind of like green bag projectiles type of things. And, uh, well, disarm, yeah, that's, that's, them in that's close the other, <clears throat> right. And that's, that's there, there's a moment of that factoid filmmaking where again, spoiler alert, you know, Don Johnson, I think does a really good job up to a point of playing the corrupt, uh, you know, mm-hmm. sheriff in the town. And at one point they're confronting each other in the, you know, evidence room of the police station. And Terry has a shotgun on Don Johnson's is it sheriff Dunn or something, yeah. um, right. shoots him like twice. Yeah. And then you like, oh my God, he, he killed the villain in the middle of the movie. But then the guy's like getting up and he's like yelling to the deputy, you shoot him. I'm like, wait, how is he still alive? And at that exact moment, Terry's like, oh yeah, I used beanbag rounds or something like that. I'm like, yeah, it's cute, but you know, <laughs> that, that, that needs to be set up because it's otherwise, cute. again, I'm kind, I'm constantly being pulled out of the movie. I'm like, what are you even talking about? Um, the whole bit with uh, James Cromwell showing up as the judge who... I, I, it comes down to the fact, David, and this is a failing of either mine or Saulnier's convoluted screenplay. I don't actually know what this movie's about. I have some idea that it involves holding people for 90 days and collect, like laundering the money through the legal system back into this town so they can use it to buy guns and stuff that they rent out to other parishes. I, I, I guess. But there's nothing that I can hang my hat on. Again, it's kind of like the the Trade Federation nonsense from Star Wars Episode <laughs> One. Yeah, it's you know interesting if you're into that. But I came here for space battles. Sure. Uh, so then I guess the question is, what did you come here for? And and I get it. I understand. Like I came I here have... for a Jeremy Saulnier movie, and I didn't <laughs> really get one. <laughs> and I, I get it. I understand. Like some of the uh, there's some wrinkles in the in the uh, I, I would say the the through line of of the plot and everything, and and how the the machinations work and everything. Um, yeah, I, I mean, as far as what I, I just feel like there's there there's this sheriff who's heading up this. He, there's that one scene where he, they're driving out Terry's in the back seat of the squad car and. There's a lot of there's an exposition explaining like why he's doing what he's doing, and he's trying to. That was that was good. Yeah, that was pretty I, good. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, 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 and that was pretty good. And Don Johnson does a great job here. He really does. Um, but you know, as far as the judge being involved and everything, I I would have liked to have seen. Like I don't think we ever saw a scene between the judge and the sheriff. That would have been interesting. Well, and, um, and that's that's sort of the, the the question I have. And if I were to go back and watch this movie again, which I won't, I could probably figure <laughs> it out. But at the end of this scene, well, you know, Terry goes to the judge's house and interrogates him. 
And then at the end of it, you realize that he had just taken a whole bunch of his dead wife's like medication and needed to be, right. you know, it was, it was like trying to kill himself. I'm like, why? I don't understand. He's not, he's not the villain. He's not exactly the patsy. I, I'm not sure how he figures into this, this whole thing. My wife I like, was like, is that guy still alive? Me, right. <laughs> and also, uh, you know, there's codename Serpico is uh, Terry and Summer, who's the the sort of the paralegal intern county at the courthouse, clerk, yeah. Yeah, county clerk, yeah, who's helping him out, you know, on the sly, uh, played, you know, by Anna Sophia Robb, who I don't think I'd seen her since. Soul Surfer? She was, I was going to say Wonka, like the, the Wonka movie. Was she in Wonka? <laughs> yeah, she played Violet Beauregard. Hilarious. Um, but so it's it's just shocking to see her like oh she was twelve and now she's like in her thirties or whatever like wow, um, but she was she was really good in it. I mean I liked I liked all the performances. I just don't think they were served that well by the screenplay. And because of that, some of the performances that in the beginning were kind of either mysterious or oh I can't wait to see what they do with this character. By the end, I was just kind of like yeah it's all it's all one note. There's not a whole lot going on here. Um, you said that you liked Terry the more that was revealed about him. I, I don't know what, what was revealed about him that I missed because well, I knew he had a cousin. I knew he was in the Marines and he taught, taught Jujitsu and he's like a master. And now he's, you know, David Banner. Well, that, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. And so, and, and but that wasn't, <laughs> but I mean, that wasn't dumped out in just, you know, an opening text, you know, it's like, sure. you know, it yeah. was, it was revealed as, as, I do like that uh, there's a couple scenes that really stand out to me that I liked. And I, I do like the opening scene. He's bicycling into uh, town on a kind of country road, forested road. And uh, he's listening to like a metal mix. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I think he's listening to like Judas Priest. Um, and and then we, we understand why, uh, I guess we kind of, well, we, we understand why he didn't hear the police car um and it's kind of interesting that they didn't uh <laughs> light the sirens and the and the the i guess what do you call it the uh yeah the, like, the dash cam the dash well that that was that, you know that was another bit of a factoid which i thought was kind of cool because it actually played into the story right um you know the, i don't know if this is true i'm going to assume it's true because he felt giddy enough to put it in his screenplay mm -hmm. but apparently if you turn on the uh, the lights on a police car, it automatically starts the dash cam recorder. Yeah. Well, and not, yeah, not the headlamps, you, the headlights, but the top, the siren. The cherries, lights. yeah. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and, but also, I guess that's something else is further revealed. If you turn those on and it turns on the dash cam recorder, it actually does a pre record of three minutes before you do that. I don't understand how that even works. Like, how do you start pre recording before you record if you're turning on the lights? But then I guess it's kind of like if you've got one of those, you know, home assistants and you say, hey, Siri, and it's like, oh, it's only listening to me when I call its name. Like, no, that's not how that works either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, so he's. Oh, got my his... God. Yes. You're right. I just activated. My phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, Siri, it works. <laughs> that creeped we'll me the see. hell out <laughs> that's a great visual aid there uh but yeah i mean he's listening he has no way of hearing his surroundings uh while he's bicycling and uh the the cops behind him we don't it's cleverly edited we don't see what's going on behind him we just kind of stay on him from from the back uh really uh and close-up shots and then he gets knocked off his bike from a, a car a vehicle and you know lands on the, the pavement and we realize that vehicle's a police car and there, you know there's definitely a feeling of like oh gosh this is going to get meta on us this is going to be like some kind of racist thing and and you know i mean sure enough it, it is there's definitely some racism oh, yeah. here there racism here <laughs> but um i you know i i i like the kind of like the fact that like you know there is a totally total misunderstanding from the get-go they think that he's they think that terry's ignoring them uh they don't realize he's got headphones in but even if the sirens were blaring it's like you don't just knock a guy off the road in a bicycle i mean 
So yeah. Yeah, I mean they could I don't remember how <laughs> narrow the road was, but I feel like they could have like <laughs> I think gone ahead of him to like wave him over or something. And I think there was a moment where they were trying to go around him, but he was like in the middle of this of the road. Oh, okay. Uh, but uh, yeah. Um so yeah, it's it the interaction that takes place after that. I mean, he is very cool and calm, but he's also has somewhere to be. He's got to bring that aforementioned cash to the the county jail um to free his cousin um i think by 5 p.m post bail by yep. 5 p.m or he'll be shipped off to a jail and because of his kind of like past kind of more so distant you know illegal activity his cousin's illegal activity um he's probably got more uh let's say foes than friends in prison that oh, yeah. would that would get him in trouble and sure enough that's what happens and why he winds up with uh, toe tag um or a bracelet like you mentioned uh but you know um I, I i like how that was that's a it was a cool opening to me because it just it, it doesn't it it doesn't dance around it just gets right to business and um it it's it reminded me of like those westerns like you know cowboy rides into town you know runs into a sheriff why are you here you know what, what's your business state your business and um yeah, I mean, the problem lies in, you know, these cops are corrupt and they take his cash and that's um, what, you know, what's been eventually with the help of the county clerk, they realize that this is what's been happening to a lot of people in this area um, that um, for some reason they've been arrested for whatever reason um, in the past, various people and kept in jail for 90 days and then left, you know, and for whatever. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. And I get that, that kind of whole scheme. I don't understand Conspiracy. the facts of it, but yeah. right. But, you know, my, a question that was never answered from the beginning of the movie all the way to the end is why are you biking anywhere with $36,000 in cash in your backpack? Now, he got this, I guess, from a contact, a friend who owned a Chinese restaurant, and he's also sort of a, a, a low-key gangster. He's got some kind of like connections because um, he's also pretty wealthy, and his place gets raided by the, by the cops. But I'm like, yeah, they have, you know, uh, they, they even mentioned Western Union. Um, they have credit card machines. This movie takes place in 2024. Why are you riding around with, where did you get $36,000 in cash from? And why couldn't you just give it to someone and say, hey, you know, put it in my account? Yeah, I mean, I think he is kind of like low tech and off the grid. Um, and he has this connection with this Chinese restaurant, at which, you know, a little bit more explanation with that connection would have been nice, but that whatever. It just it doesn't help me with with Terry in the beginning, like the opening few minutes, because I understand that we have to get to the point where he's seeking revenge against the town. But right off the bat, he's riding with, you know, blasting heavy metal music while riding in the middle of an open country road on a bicycle. So now he can't hear anything. And then also he's riding around with 36 grand in cash regardless of how off the grid he is, he's still a really smart dude and has to understand how dangerous that is. <laughs> Maybe he figured, well, even if, you know, a team full of rednecks pull up in their, you know, uh, pickup truck, maybe he could take them, but that's still a dangerous thing to do with all that money, especially if it's so important. You'd figure, especially, again, I get living off the grid, but there was a Western Union station right outside the place where he was going to get his uh, to put the money in for his brother or his cousin mm -hmm. he could have done that shit from home or i guess a friend's house a or... movie. exactly and that's again when i think about these fundamental problems it's mm -hmm. up to the movie to to answer these questions for me i feel like otherwise at the end unless i'm really wrapped up and invested in the story which in this case i'm not i'm just like was this worth it and for me the answer is no i'd rather go back and watch murder party Sonia's, you know first his feature debut again um or green room blue ruin these are movies that managed to take the revenge archetype and put a 
twist on it. Mm -hmm. uh, punk band goes to the wrong bar and ends up having to fight for their life against you know Nazi skinheads led by Patrick Stewart. I mean, that's a log line for the ages, right? Quite an elevator pitch. Yes, exactly. I kept thinking about a movie that we talked about earlier this year. That you didn't like. That No, that I loved. Okay. Right. Red Right Hand. Oh, yes. yes by the Nelmses. Yes, yes, yes. Another, you know, Southern town corruption, uh, revenge, murder, uh, people drawn back into a life of, you know, mm -hmm. having to, to, put to put to use their special skills that they thought they left behind. Um, yeah, I, that I think is a, is a great movie. And when I watch something like this, again, I appreciate that it exists, but if anyone was to say, Hey, should I watch this? I'd probably say no. And then I just like read them a list of five movies, four of them, which were also written directed by Jeremy Sonnier. Sure. No, I totally understand. It's not the best Sonnier movie. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, like I definitely had more, uh, fun with it than you did. Um, that other one scene, though, that I that I enjoyed was when Terry's running out of options, and he and he came back to the the I guess the sheriff's station, and uh, he's just standing outside. And they look outside. You know, Don Johnson and his his uh, uh, officers are, are looking outside. It's like, oh, he's back, and he's just standing out there and. It's a nice little edit where they're like, they just kind of got some information, I guess via via fax, got some information on his, basically his dossier, his stats, like who he was, what he was. And then there's, there's like all these initials uh, from the military. And they're like, hey, uh, Don Johnson's like, hey, uh, so-and-so, what can you Google that? What does that mean? You know, and of course their internet goes out. So while the internet goes out, while they're redoing the modem, he, you know, the sheriff grabs his gun and walks out to greet him, you know, very old West style. Um, mm -hmm. And, and it's a great cut back and forth to uh, the other guy in the, in the precincts like, Hey, is the internet back up? Did you figure this out? And that's when they realize what these, once it, the internet goes back on, it's what realize what these abbreviations are meaning like, Basically, he's a badass, you know, um, and he's he's a trainer of, you know, you know, in the in the Marines, and he can he's an uh, expert in basically close quarters hand to hand combat, um, and it was just funny. It's like as soon as they realize that, it's one of those things where certain characters know something that the other character doesn't, but he really should. <laughs> Um, so it was, I, I liked how that scene kind of, you know, went down. Um, it was great. Yeah, yeah. That, and I think that's, that's the thing is like the first 45 minutes, maybe mm -hmm. an hour of this movie, I was really into it until I realized that it wasn't going to go past a certain point. Now we talked about, he doesn't get pushed to his limits or, or whatever. It's not the typical revenge story, but he keeps suggesting that it's going to go there. He's like, I'm going to haunt these motherfuckers or it's time to burn the whole thing down. I'm like, OK, but by burn the whole thing down, he means I'm going to get to a lot of encounters with a lot of people with guns. I'm going to dramatically empty their clips right in front of them. Isn't that awesome? I don't mean empty their clips by shooting at them. I mean, doing the thing where they get the, the magazine, they go tit, 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 so the bullets fall on the ground. I'm like, it's cool, but, you know, it's not exactly escalation from where we started. And I think that's, you know, something that an action movie wants their needs even terminator 2 where the whole thing was i swear i will not kill anyone there's a lot of death in that movie and a lot of kneecapping and very clever you know ways around you know hurting people but a lot of people do get hurt in that movie and you don't really get that here uh yeah i just this i i get it we're gonna we're gonna agree to disagree on this movie but I'm not mad about it. I just don't care. I think that's, yeah, this is about as animated as I can get about Rebel Ridge. David, you're back. And yes. uh, we got disconnected. I blame Siri. Okay. Um, no, she didn't come on that time. Maybe there's a delay. But uh, yeah, I blame, so. I blame Comcast. Okay, there we go. 
<laughs> we love Comcast. I just don't want to get sued. That's true. Um, so yeah, I guess closing thoughts on on Rebel. Oh, I, one thing that was fascinating. Yes. And this felt like a like a a MythBusters factoid or something. There's a bit where Summer and Terry go to the police station under cover of night to retrieve um, the hard drives with the dash cam footage on it. Yeah. So they can take it as evidence. And like a and SIM they card get... too, right? Yeah. There's like a SIM card and a DVR. And it's <laughs> even the technology is complicated in this movie. But they go to the uh, the basement of the police station and they realize that Don Johnson's goons have you know, trailed the place with, uh, with gasoline because they're going to try and destroy all the evidence. Uh, so they get caught down there and they light the fire. Trails going down the hallway. Terry goes to try and find something. When he comes back, Summer's standing there in the hallway and the, the fire has stopped right at her feet. And he, she turns to him and says, oh, coconut water. So I'm like, I guess coconut water can diffuse yeah. a trail of gasoline that's been lit ablaze. It's just, again, I don't know. I don't want to try it in a life or death situation, but I also kind of want to carry coconut water with me. I might try it next time I go camping. Well, that would be, that's not a... See, they lit the fire with like what is it? It was a gasoline or, or I don't think I don't know if they showed it. They just showed it yeah. like lighting on fire because they were up the stairs and around so the hall just, or something. As far as we know, it was just a fire, right? It wasn't yeah. like a special fire. Interesting. <laughs> and maybe, maybe the next time I go camping, I'll try and douse the campfire with coconut water. Um, yeah. Um, just don't douse a campfire with gasoline. I found out the hard way. At least a friend of mine did. You shouldn't um, do that. No. Why no. would? Why would anybody do that? Because they were 14 and they were idiots. Oh, well, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, you know, yeah, that was, here's the thing. Yeah. I, I Again, I'd, I'd like to see more stuff with Aaron Pierre in it. Mm -hmm. um, like, I know he's been in a few other things. I mean, I don't remember much of him from old. But he's kind of one of those actors where you see him, something really stands out about the performance, and you realize, oh, I've seen other movies he's been in, or she, you know, in terms of actresses, and then you go back and you kind of, like, watch them for the first time, like, oh, wow, I didn't realize that person was doing that thing in that movie. Um, so, yeah, yeah there, there are some wins here, but um, yeah, as far as Sonia goes, if this is a new direction for him, I'm not that interested. If it's an experiment, I'm all for it, for filmmakers branching out and, and exploring their creativity. It just for me, the, this result was not a home run in the way that like all of the other movies I've seen him, of him have been like instant classics to use a terrible cliche. Yeah, I mean, by all means, uh, this isn't uh, a masterpiece to use a terrible cliche. Uh, but <laughs> I, I, as far as a Netflix movie um, and a kind of like a, a divergence in uh uh, Saulnier's filmography, I'm there for it. It was good, um, for and sure. I I really enjoyed. Uh, There's definitely a handful of scenes I really enjoyed. Um, like I said, some of the plot machinations are a little fuzzy, but um, everything else just kind of you know. I think the uh, you know the screen presence of definitely uh, you know Don Johnson and uh, Pierre. I think they were Aaron Pierre were really good. Um, I I enjoyed it, and David Dunham and Emery Cohen play the kind of corrupt, the main two corrupt, corrupt cops, corrupt cops, um, <laughs> and um, they uh, these are character actors who've you know been around for a little while here, and uh, it was good to see them as well, um, and it was a nice a little a little bit of a uh, subversion with who the actual Serpico type character is at the end, but. <clears throat> and yeah and that's i think i was actually going to mention that um earlier i got sidetracked big surprise but when that revelation came out i'm thinking why how it's just i mean this is this is like a long weekend to go from being the type of character you are on thursday afternoon to being a completely different type of character on like tuesday or whatever it ends up being i don't know if this is a full week but i just Again, I had lots of questions. Yeah, Love the I mean, actor, but I, I, I almost it. I almost wish that uh, Denim's character uh, would have been a little bit more fleshed out, so we see 
so we have a little bit more of an in with him um because like yeah from when we first meet him up until the third act's revelation like okay how often has he had to do this you know and and play along with the corruption and whatever but yeah i mean does it does he have somebody else that he reports to you know so it would be really interesting to know, to know but Oh my gosh! Yeah, what if uh, what if he had been a mole on the part of someone who is like Don Johnson's boss and all yeah, this, like this overseeing our network, or the or yeah. the judge or the mayor or something? You know, that would have been interesting. When Demon, when his character, because um, he's sort of taken the lead during the initial arrest, and then when Terry goes, when he finally makes his way to the the sheriff's station and fills out a report against the cops, which again, the early scenes in this movie are all dynamite. Yeah. Like this is really a solid are. first hour film, right? Mm -hmm. But Demon, his character is conspicuously not there. It's his right. partner, the kind of like the the loose cannon guy. So mm -hmm. you almost get the feeling that Demon's character is the is the brains of the two. It yeah. hasn't quite been revealed that Don Johnson is the sheriff and all this other stuff is going on. So you're like, if that guy's not there, then I wonder where he is and what he's doing. And I kept wondering that because he is conspicuously absent so you're waiting for him to either come back and be like really bad or some kind of a transformation but we don't get a transformation we just get a oh by the way i'm i'm now on your side <laughs> yeah yeah there is definitely a, a kind of like a uh, uncertain absence from uh, from him um even in the, within the first hour so kind of odd but but you know it's interesting because I know. I'm sorry. I said I was winding down, but now I'm. I'm You're winding up. The, yeah, I'm going on all these avenues. There was one cop who Terry kind of approaches, and he uses him as a bit of a ruse. He pl plants him in a cop car. The other cops. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know they they sneak up on him like, oh no, it's what's one of our guys. That should have been David Denman's character because he's like, I've got a you know I've got a family. You know, please don't hurt me or whatever. They should have gotten the best of him, and in that exchange somehow. When he realizes that Terry really is, you know, trying to do the best for his cousin. I mean, you have to go back and rewrite, you know, half the movie, but that would have been at least some kind of a bridge for him to turn sides. And we see that. I think there was an extraneous character in the movie who whose story could have been planted or pasted onto one of the main characters, turns out. That would have made things a lot smoother. Yeah. Yeah. It's understandable. I get it. Um, but, uh, yeah. So Rebel Ridge. <laughs> currently on netflix um, along with another movie uh, i can recommend hitman did you watch that yet oh yeah with, uh, i really Powell? enjoyed that that was great yes yes great. did you I, have you I talked about it on the, sh on the show yet yes okay maybe i was i think around. i talked about it i think i talked about it with jeff at the beginning of the summer it yeah, was yeah, seems yeah, like yeah, five did. years ago yeah. um but um yeah i mean that's the thing is like netflix they they're they're very miss or hit but sometimes they'll come out with movies that are great. Sometimes they'll come out with movies that are, you know, really interesting. I think this is one of those movies. It didn't do it for me, but I'm glad it exists because now I kind of know that I don't always have to go to a Jeremy Saulnier movie thinking, oh, this is going to be one kind of thing. Now I know he's got some other tricks up his sleeve. I wasn't wowed by it, but, you know, maybe I will be in the future. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm but. definitely looking forward to more from, you know, the, the actors, so. Yeah, where's 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 Anna Sophia Rob been? She's she's really good in this movie. Yeah, she is. She's really good. Uh, really kind of um, there, yeah. There's that's the funny thing is like there's layers to these characters, and maybe it's it's not necessarily the way they're written, but it's the way they're performed. There's layers to these characters that you feel like, wow, if I could just spend some more time with them, maybe I could, maybe I could, you know, figure out more about them. But and that's, I think it's a good testament of some good performances. Very much so. Um, I did like one exchange um, dialogue where she's uh, again in the the sheriff's office trying to talk to Terry on the on the down low, and one of her coworkers says, "You know, are you down there, Summers?" She's like, "Yeah, I'm smoking." Yeah. And then he's like, "You don't smoke." She's like, "I'm I'm vaping." <laughs> I know I'm vaping. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. it, yeah, it was really interesting, especially like in a small town where like everybody knows everybody else's business. Um, yeah, um, so. Again, I, I enjoyed it. Um, you not so much, but you know, 
We're yeah. There. So if you're if, if you're a fan of Jeremy Saulnier, watch it, but be warned, this is not like his other works. But maybe you'll really respond to that, like like David did, or maybe you won't, like me. But uh, God, I hope not, because I'm I'm beginning to wonder, David, do I like movies anymore? And the answer is. Uh, yes, but they have to be probably from before the year 1990 because uh, I'm finding a lot of solace in old movies. Oh, good. We could still be friends then. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David Fowley of Keeping It Real. Thanks for this uh, this odyssey in talking about uh, Rebel Ridge. I know it's been kind of up and down Choppy. as far as technology and opinions, but uh, I definitely appreciate it, man. And 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 don't give up hope. Please don't give up on me. Continue recommending movies for us to talk about because one day we're going to jump in the air in celebration of a film that we both think is amazing. I will throw something at you and see. we'll see what sticks. All right. <laughs> My spaghetti friend. That's right. All right, man. Take it easy. And oh, by the way, folks out there, follow David's stuff at Keeping It Real. Links down below. If you like this show, please like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, until next time, whenever that is, whatever that is, thanks and take care.